and you're going to have a good time doing it. And if you're having a good time, you're having fun with your art, then that's where uh, that's where it's gonna it's gonna show, and the quality of your work's gonna go up, and then everyone's gonna realize that you're uh, you're having a good time and you're working out. It's it's going good, you know. I mean, if you if something if everything is a job to you, every piece of art that you do is just a chore. You're not um. You're not gonna have a great time, and it's gonna show, and your work is gonna suffer a little bit. I used to get teased by an old friend of mine that she used to say, "Why do you always call it art work? Why does it always have to be work to you?" And I don't know why I called it that. I guess that's what I was told it was called when I was younger, but it's definitely not work to me. That's not the way I see it. And I, um, I call it artwork, and I call it your work because you do have to work at it. But when you're drawing, you're having fun. I can't imagine that everyone feels like it's fun. But I would hope so, just for their sake. Because if there's so many people out there having so much fun drawing, and then you're not, um, it just seems like, wow, what are you missing? What's different? But uh, I, I'm never going to tell anyone what to do or what to think. So this is kind of coming along good. I'm almost finished. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I want to uh, keep it as a sketch, as a study, get on to the next one. This is like warming up, and if I commit too much to this piece, then it becomes a project, and this, in my schedule for today, is not a big piece, it's not a big project. So I'm going to just limit it to a few colors. I think limiting your palette, limiting your selection, limiting your brush strokes, these are great choices when you're doing artwork because then it becomes um, a lot of choices and a, lot, a distinct style, something that you can look at and you know that you made choices in the piece. It creates an air of, of, of priorities. That's the word I'm looking for. You're prioritizing what you see in that piece. And then when you do that, Everyone has different priorities in their drawings, in their artwork, in their paintings. So everyone's going to see things differently. And then once you start defining those priorities, that's what's unique about your work. I know some caricaturists, they draw with lines. Some caricaturists, they draw with cross-hatching. Some, uh, some artists, they do portraits in pastels. Some artists do portraits in oils. They do them in acrylic or chalk. There's so many different ways to do everything. And once you make a decision, that's what a lot of people might argue that art is about. It's about that decision. So I guess sometimes by abbreviating your work, you're making a solid decision. I get told quite often by friends that um, when they see my unfinished pieces, they're like, oh, that's good, don't touch it. But I know what I had in my head to begin with, but they like those decisions that I made. And I feel the same way. I'll look at a Sebastian Kruger piece, and I'll... I'll think about his decisions and I'll say, wow, that's that's really awesome. And it's an unfinished painting most of the time when I think that about a piece. So there's there's definitely a, a charm to it. All right, so I'm at a point where I've established those the darker elements of this. Like I started with the middle value and I started with the darker and I'm letting the light show through with the first value that I picked up. I'm going to grab one tone lighter than I have here and I'm going to start defining the light areas of this piece. First I want to add a little more dark down here. I'm going to leave the focus on his face because I just like faces and that's something that um, I talked about in another podcast where you leave focus where you sharpen darken I'm sorry where your sharp and soft edges are hard and soft edges and uh, that's a decision I want to start making in my pieces. And on top of that, I thought about why can't I have contrast choices as well? Have more contrast and less contrast in a piece. So there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try uh, to utilize that in this piece. Even though it's a sketch, it's one thing that I'm thinking about. Giving yourself priorities while you're doing artwork is a great idea too. That's one thing I've been learning lately is when I'm doing a piece, what am I starting out thinking? What is my goal when I'm starting this piece, and why am I doing it? If you can't answer why you're doing a piece, then you have to try to figure that out. I mean, if you're doing it just to draw, then yeah, great. If you uh, have some sort of priority or some sort of idea, that's great as well. I think that no matter what your, your reasoning is, you need that reason. 
That's just my opinion. I don't know if that's a, a terrible thing to say or not, but that's how I feel about it. And I try to make sure lately that I have a reason for doing my artwork. All right, so I'm going to throw some darks on his back and then jump to the light areas. He's got this nice little uh, muscle here that I left a little too high. You can't see my reference, but um, I definitely am a reference guy. I like looking at something and building on it because you can cartoon, and that's a great thing, but uh, my buddy Steve Silver mentioned he builds a visual arsenal. He builds up... Uh, this visual code that he has, like a library of images, and I think that is so amazing. That's something I plan on doing. It's a goal of mine. Um, right now, I'm still building it, and this is part of that. I'm studying these muscles, the way the light shines off his coat, the way it picks up back here because he's turning into the receding, and because he's receding and he has a shiny coat, there's a nice little darker area right here. So I'm trying to retain all this information and paint it. And maybe if I uh, come back to it someday and I have to draw an Italian Greyhound or any other dog that has a similar coat to it, I'll recall what I did here. And maybe it'll, uh, it'll help me out in that situation. That's at least my goal. So I'm going to bring this a little bit darker for this area just to define this edge. and the shadow and some of these creases on his neck and then I'm gonna move right into the uh, I'm gonna move right into some of the highlights and then I'll be ready to pretty much uh, sign off for the day Now sometimes when I get into my paintings I stop talking, I notice, or I start um, start thinking too much about what I'm doing. I don't think you can think too much about what you're doing, but I start thinking about it and I get quiet. You have to forgive me for all the times I do that, I'll apologize in advance because you're not going to get me to apologize again. <laughs> Though I might, I might start apologizing just to fill the void. I find that I'm quite a talker and my girlfriend sometimes gets annoyed with it but she's adorable for putting up with me. So um, I was hanging out with my friend Ed Steckley the other day. He's a good illustrator, and he was talking about storyboards. That's something that fascinates me. That's another reason I'm doing these digital, uh, digital podcasts, is I want to learn about drawing things on the spot quickly. I want to get quicker with my own work, and I'd like to be able to, uh, to define images that are believable or very representational in a quick amount of time, in a short amount of time. And uh, I think this will really help if I can if I can get a grasp on this. I enjoy the musculature right here in this dog's face. Once again, if you didn't know that it was a dog, I'm sorry. But you should have. And maybe I'm doing a bad job of drawing it. Alright, so I'm going to jump up in value. I'm going to make it a bit lighter. And I'm going to start out by defining the areas around this little this little dude and defining the areas that I want sharp edges and soft edges that's something I really enjoy lately I've been talking about it a lot right here I want his head to sort of recede a little and I want his eyes to be sharp so I'm gonna bring it up right here I enjoy that I'm gonna even take this shadow 